Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being with us this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure to welcome Minister Walker for a visit that I'm sure will familiarize him even more uh, with Gibraltar. Um, as we will all in Gibraltar recall, uh, Robin had a clear grasp of Gibraltar issues even when he first got up to speak in his role as Minister in Dexu uh, in the Westminster Hall debate now an age ago in July. Um, but I think this visit will enable him to see the lay of this magnificent land of ours uh, for himself uh, and even more closely. And I'm delighted that he is here and that he will have a chance later to meet other members of our community beyond the Gibraltar government team that's been working so closely with him since he became a minister after the referendum result was announced. So, Robin, welcome to Gibraltar. Thank you very much indeed, Fabian. Can I start by um, thanking you and the, uh, Chief Min uh, the Deputy Chief Minister for the invitation to come here to Gibraltar. I'm very pleased to be here. It's my first visit as a minister to The Rock, uh, and it's a very useful opportunity to continue the uh, regular discussions that we've been having uh, over in London, engaging the government in Gibraltar in our preparations for the United Kingdom's exit uh, from the European Union. Gibraltar is a key part of the British family, and this visit has allowed me to see firsthand the thriving community Gibraltarians have built for themselves. It's important we continue to work together to maintain and strengthen the UK-Gibraltar bond as we move together into a bright future. The UK deeply values British sovereignty over Gibraltar and is fully committed to promoting the interests of Gibraltar and the wishes of Gibraltarians. I'd like to emphasise that the United Kingdom will never enter into arrangements under which the people of Gibraltar would pass under the sovereignty of another state against their freely and democratically expressed wishes. Furthermore, the United Kingdom will not enter into any process of sovereignty negotiations with which Gibraltar is not content. Gibraltar's fast-growing economy has been transformed by financial services, tourism, insurance and commercial port services. And when it comes to financial services, there are strong mechanisms already underpinning Gibraltar's access to the UK market, which are enshrined in UK law. It's our intention to maintain Gibraltar's current access to the UK market in financial services. And we're examining together where we can broaden our economic cooperation and increase market access. We will take into account the priorities of Gibraltar and the other overseas territories as the United Kingdom looks to establish new trade and investment agreements with the wider world. On the issue of the border, we understand that a well-functioning border between Gibraltar and Spain is vitally important. We will want to ensure the border will continue to function well. We've had some very constructive discussions this morning and will continue to work with Her Majesty's Government of Gibraltar to ensure all their interests are taken into account in the upcoming negotiations. I'm determined we keep up this engagement throughout the process. I'm also delighted that I'll have an opportunity during this visit to speak to so many representatives of different sectors of Gibraltar's thriving economy. And we're very clear that we want a deal that works for everyone, including the people of Gibraltar, as we prepare for the United Kingdom's exit from and new partnership with the European Union. Thank you very much. Well, I, in welcoming uh, Robin Walker to Gibraltar, I know that I am welcoming a friend. That, I think, is abundantly clear. And I'm very happy indeed that he's taken the time to come to Gibraltar, uh, especially at this moment, just ahead of the formal notification by the United Kingdom of its intention to leave the European Union. I should start by apologizing to him for the weather. <laughs> he was diverted to Malaga yesterday, but at least you had an opportunity of seeing um, the, the whole of the uh, northern side of the frontier, if I can put it that way. Um, I should say I particularly welcome the assurances that Robin has just given about the continued access Gibraltar will have to the United Kingdom market. Um, he has already, as, I, as I've said repeatedly, shown himself to be a good friend of Gibraltar. And indeed, that first intervention in Parliament in the Westminster Hall debate was really um, something that warmed uh, Gibraltarians to the uh, interventions he would make in future for Gibraltar. I think this visit, therefore, symbolizes the close working relationship that exists between Her Majesty's respective governments of Gibraltar and of the United Kingdom. And his visit is a clear reflection of the real action that there is behind the pledge that Gibraltar would be fully involved in the process of exiting the European Union. In that process, uh, we've had access to members of the United Kingdom government at the highest level, and we're assured and have every reason to believe that that access will continue in the process of the negotiations to come. 
And I think that will be very useful in allowing us to continue to put Gibraltar's point of view across once those formal negotiations with the European Union commence. The Prime Minister herself has made clear that those multilateral negotiations will be conducted by the United Kingdom government on behalf of the whole of the wider British family of nations. And in the course of today, the government has facilitated a series of contacts for Robin with a right cross-section of the Gibraltarian community. We've arranged for him to see business organizations, trade unions, parliamentarians, and others with a direct interest in the progress of the Brexit negotiations. He will learn more about all our concerns. We're all aware that there are challenges that the next two years will bring, and it's important that the concerns that we have about what those two years could bring be put to Robin today. It would be unreal to suggest that the next 24 months will be anything other than challenging, although we are confident that working closely with the UK, we will be able to ensure the continued unaffected stability of our economy and the continued prosperity of our nation. We can take comfort from the assurances given that the United Kingdom will take account of those concerns on which we are working closely with uh, Minister Walker and other UK ministerial colleagues. Above all, I welcome that our right to self-determination and our continued British sovereignty remains a sacrosanct commitment entirely unaffected by the result of the referendum last year, as confirmed by Minister Walker a moment ago. Thank you. Mr. Walker, good morning. Uh, I'm Brian Reyes. I'm with the Gibraltar Chronicle. Um, David Davis uh, said earlier this week that he was confident that the UK government uh, and the Irish government working with the European Commission would be able to find solutions to ensure continued uh, border fluidity between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Um, in contrast, Prime Minister Theresa May uh, was asked a question about the Gibraltar-Spain border in the House of Commons on Tuesday and avoided the answer. Um, so my question to you is, um, how confident are you that you'll be able to secure the necessary goodwill from the various parties to ensure continued uh, border fluidity uh, at the Gibraltar-Spain border? And within that, uh, and taking a step back also within the wider context of the Brexit negotiations, um, do you envisage when you're talking about Gibraltar's interests that you'll be talking to the 27, or do you envisage that you'll be talking to Spain, which is what the Spanish government uh, believes you should be doing? Sure. I mean, I think we need to be clear that in these negotiations that we are talking to the European institutions uh, and indeed the 27 member states, of which Spain is one, uh, and we will need to have contacts at every level uh, to make sure that the process is a success. But when it comes to the border, I think as with the broader negotiations, uh, what we need to focus on is the mutual interest in reaching sensible arrangements. Uh, and it's very clear that Gibraltar's huge economic success brings enormous benefits um, to Andalusia and to Spain more generally. Uh, maintaining um, the, uh, the functioning of the border uh, is in the interests of both sides in this negotiation. So I have no doubt there will be challenges along the way. Um, but what we want to ensure is, is that that uh, fundamental interest is, is supported uh, and that we can continue to support a strong and growing uh, Gibraltar economy, which is a benefit to the entire region. Uh, Mr. Walker, Jonathan Sacramento from uh, Gibraltar Broadcasting News. Uh, how high up on the priority list is Gibraltar when it's compiling its uh, negotiations with the European Union? And will there be an element of financial compensation for, uh, for Gibraltar in terms of the many projects that Gibraltar uses EU funding for, which it will no longer have access to after uh, it leaves the European Union? Well, it's very important that we uh, recognise that throughout this process and during the negotiations, we remain a member of the European Union, and so EU funding, where it is available, should continue to be available uh, through that process. One of the things that we're looking at as part of our strategy in this is where there are uh, opportunities, for instance, on uh, Horizon and the um, European research programmes that, that Britain can continue to play a role in the future uh, in those even after leaving the European Union. We should look at those and, and, and see, see how we can negotiate on those and of course we want to make sure that the benefits of that were shared with the wider uh, British family of, of nations but also if, if there were not those opportunities and in other areas where uh, EU funding might have been in place the Treasury has provided some very important guarantees uh, which protect funding up to 2020 uh, and we will of course have to look in the future as to how we uh, finance those things and, so, and support those things a, a, as an independent United Kingdom. So I think we want to involve Gibraltar in the process of, of, of discussing that and, and make sure that we are working closely with the government of Gibraltar uh, to ensure those long-term needs are met. Mr. Walker, um, I'm John from the Panorama. Um, 
you you saw when you needed to cross the frontier after your flight was diverted just how important um, a free flowing frontier is to Gibraltar even if it's just in terms of flights but not only in terms of flights but also in terms of the the free movement of workers across the frontier every day um, how clear can you put to the government and through through the government to the Article 50 negotiations, how important that free-flowing frontier is to us? I, I think we have a very good understanding of how important that free-flowing frontier is to the economy. Uh, also, as I've discussed earlier, to the, to the mutual self-interest of, of, of both sides in this negotiation uh, and of making sure that we support a, a, a strong economy for the, for the region as a whole, there is nothing like seeing it for yourself. Uh, and whilst it's, it's never ideal to have a flight delayed or, 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 or changed, uh, actually the opportunity to, to, to to come and see this directly has certainly brought that home to me and it's something I shall take back into our discussions uh, both in, in Westminster and more broadly. We'll take one more question I think because we're in a very tight deadline so there's two. Yeah. Hi Priya from your Gibraltar TV. Um, I just wanted to know what, to what extent will Gibraltar be included in post um, Brexit trade deals with other countries? Um, this is something that we, as I mentioned in my speech, you know, we're very keen to explore. I think there are a world of opportunities out there in the, uh, the, the deals that the UK can strike. Uh, and uh, I know that um, there will be meetings um, moving on. We've had meetings with trade ministers already as part of our uh, JMC process, but we'll be wanting to make sure that our Department for International Trade engages closely uh, the government of Gibraltar so we can fully explore all the opportunities that are there. Uh, I think there are, that there are some exciting opportunities in that space. And just to give one example, um, we have an upcoming meeting of Commonwealth Trade Ministers to discuss the opportunities there. I'm sure there are many interests in this family of nations uh, in doing business with Gibraltar uh, as well as with the wider UK. Hi Mr Walker, I'm Joe Duggan from the Olive Press. Um, I've spoken to a number of the British campaign groups based in Spain and they've expressed their disappointment to me about the level of engagement they're getting from the, the UK government. I mean, for example, there was a meeting a couple of weeks ago in Mihas where two representatives from the exiting the EU committee were, were supposed to attend and they cancelled at the last minute. So, I mean, what's your response to those, what they're saying there, that the British government aren't engaging well with the ex British expats in Spain? Well, first of all, I'd say that, you know, we've heard very clearly the concern of, of British expats living all over the um, European Union. And that's one of the reasons why we've been very clear on the re to need to reach a really strong reciprocal deal early in the negotiations. We've set out the government's position uh, to do that. And we think it's absolutely right that, that we have a moral and legal responsibility uh, to UK citizens wherever the w they live. Uh, we want to ensure we deliver on that by securing a, a strong deal uh, in this respect. I think in terms of uh, members of the exiting the EU Select Committee, they are independent parliamentarians, so I can't speak on their behalf. Uh, but certainly we as a government have heard from um, many of the groups representing uh, UK expats, and we want to ensure that their interests are protected in this process, just as we want to extend that protection to EU citizens living in the UK. We think that's a positive thing for the dynamic of the negotiations, uh, and it's something that we will want to do uh, for, again, for, 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 for the UK's national interest, um, but also for, for, for the interests of the wider family of um, nations that we represent and, and territories such as Gibraltar. So uh, I think we can start this negotiation on the right foot uh, by securing that type of deal, uh, and uh, that's what I'm very keen that we, that we focus on. And just to return to your point as to the priority um, that we are giving uh, Gibraltar in these negotiations, I, I, I would say it's there in, in the term of, of family. You, you are a key part um, of the overall UK position uh, in this respect, and we shall certainly give you the priority that, mer that merits. Well, thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the minister is on a tight schedule today, as you know. Uh, there's a lot to show him, lots of people to talk to, uh, a lot of impressions uh, for Robin to have the opportunity to take back to London. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.